Our next guests have nearly nine million subscribers on YouTube. And on their channel, yes. And on their channel, they use science to tackle questions like, how do you survive an apocalypse? Or are good looking people jerks? And what if you stop sleeping? Today, they're here to set us straight on some long-standing Halloween myths. Please welcome from ASAP Science, Mitch Moffat and Greg Brown. Thank you. Greg and Mitch, we're so happy that you're here, but can you tell us a little bit about your costumes? What's going on here? So I am carbon dioxide, because <laughs> well, I know it's spooky, climate change, it's real, and it will kill people. <laughs> um, I'm Oxygen Z, so while you guys talk, I'll be over here on TikTok. <laughs> YouTube channel, what we love is that you make science make sense. And we were hoping that you can help us make a little bit of sense of some Halloween myths in a little game that we like to call... Trick or Truth. I will be reading along a series of statements. So Lainey, Cynthia, and Marcy, you will be using paddles that you have in your hands there to vote on whether the statement that I am saying is a trick or is it the truth? And then Greg and Mitch, you're gonna set us straight and let us know which one is which. You'll set us straight. This is a competition after all, so we will be tallying points, because that just makes it more fun to declare a myth-busting uh, winner, that is. <laughs> so audience, you have paddles of your own as well, so we wanna make sure that you are weighing in in the audience along with the ladies up here. Is everybody ready? <laughs> Okay, so let's get going here. Trick or truth? <clears throat> a virus could actually start a zombie apocalypse. Truth or trick? Yeah. It's actually the truth! Yeah. What? <laughs> How? Okay, so if we're talking about people like dying and coming back to life, that's not exactly true. Okay. But if we care about how a zombie acts, like wanting to eat human flesh and have being brain dead, we could actually target a couple regions of a brain through a virus. So basically, if we hit the hypothalamus, that controls your desire to stop eating, so that's gone. If we go to your amygdala, it controls your emotions and memory. And if we go to the frontal cortex, that controls your morality and your inhibition. So there's one nerve in your body that affects all three of these regions, and it's the olfactory nerve, which is up your nose. So if there was a virus specific to that nerve set of cells, it could affect that and create a super hungry, aggressive, zombie-like person who wouldn't be able to recognize their family and friends and would just want to eat them. Okay. Oh. Okay. That's lovely. <laughs> everybody, ladies, everybody in the audience, trick or truth, you can actually be scared to death. Truth. Craig, Mitch? It's a truth! You can be scared to death if you have a weak heart, okay? So that's the important thing to know. So when you get scared, it creates something uh, called the fight or flight. Yes! like that, though, with a healthy heart. And it's also like, are you alive? <laughs> so yeah, so you just had the fight or flight response. As you can see, you either were gonna punch him or you were gonna run. <laughs> and we've evolved that trait since we were hunter-gatherers. Oh, wow. You okay? No, okay. <laughs> want to consider as the kids dive into their candy stashes. Trick or truth, <laughs> sugar makes kids hyperactive. Truth or trick? Truth. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that I see where you guys are, I see what you're doing. <laughs> okay. It is a trick. So many studies have shown that there's no link between sugar and hyperactivity, but the link is on the parents, okay? So the parents who think there's a link see it and call it hyperactivity, but the truth is kids are probably just excited because it's Halloween and it's candy and it's a birthday party and they're just getting adrenaline and dopamine kicks out of all that, but there is no link to hyperactivity. Wow. Parents okay. are projecting, they're yeah, projecting. Parents. parents are projecting. I do want to say if you are keeping track at home, the score is two, two. One, two for Marcy, two for Cynthia, one for Lainey. Oh, All right, here we go. It's close. Okay, trick or truth? It's possible to overdose on candy. Trick or truth? Okay, it is a truth. Woo! 
<laughs> so there's a very important thing in toxicology. It's this very famous saying, which is the dose makes the poison. So you can overdose on anything, including broccoli. That's for you kids, you can take that home. <laughs> So you can overdose on literally anything, but there's a specific candy that you have to look out for, which is very easy to not eat because it's disgusting, and it's called black licorice. So <laughs> if you eat a lot of, if you eat more than two ounces of black licorice over two weeks and you're over 40, the FDA says that you can get a heart arrhythmia because there's actually something in licorice root that decreases potassium in your body, and therefore it makes it like, it puts a strain on your heart. But We've also made other videos of, called This Much Will Kill You. So if you're, based on science and the average body type, if you had 11,000 oranges, you would die. <laughs> <laughs> if you had 10 and a half cups of sugar immediately, you would die. Um, 13 consecutive shots of alcohol, which it was like, I think I've done one, but I'm still here. Um, yeah, many other things, 480 bananas. Anyways, you get the point. We the get the point. The poison. <laughs> okay, got it. All right, so here we go, trick or truth. Here we go, candy hangovers are real. Trick or truth? Yeah. That's a trick. <laughs> so, okay, when you think of a hangover, you obviously think of the next day. So, when you eat candy, you're not going to be affected the next morning when you wake up. But you do get a sugar crash, which is more immediately after. So, when we eat sugar, sugar we get adrenaline. It's really exciting, especially now that it's all processed. Like, our evolved bodies are like, what is this stuff? Like, we're not used to it. And we get excited, but then insulin gets released. That's kind of like the Debbie Downer of your body. It's like, chill out. We need to store this sugar. It absorbs it into your pancreas. And you no longer as ex are as excited. You get that crash. So you don't get hung over the next day. Imagine, though, your kids, two weeks after Halloween, being like, every morning, like, mom, stop yelling. Give me a coffee. I'm hung over. Exactly. It doesn't happen. Okay, well, kind of related and something to keep in mind if you are having any Halloween libations tonight. So trick or truth, hangover headaches are caused by your brain physically shrinking. Mm. It's a truth. Yeah. Okay, so when you drink alcohol, it's a diuretic, so it makes you pee a lot more. You might have this experience where you're going to the bathroom over and over. And when you're dehydrated, your other organs start to steal water from your brain, and it shrinks. And then the muscles and tissue connected to your skull, there's a lot of pressure there, and it hurts. So it is a truth. Now, we've tested on our channel a lot of hangover cures. From we love like testing eating, drinking. Yeah, many videos. <laughs> we ate tons of carbs. We tried different vitamins. The only, the best option for you is to hydrate as well as you can, but the only cure is sadly to not drink alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't... We can do it, we can all not drink, right? <laughs> okay, well, we're not gonna let it go that easily here because you're on the social after all. It's a code that a lot of us do live by when we are drinking, Tr trick or truth. Beer before liquor, never been sicker. Truth or trick? Ooh. Okay, so this is actually a trick, okay? Yeah. This is a very commonly held belief, and there's a lot of studies that actually have found that carbonation increases the amount of alcohol that gets absorbed in your stomach, and that's where this comes from. But now, more recently, they have not been able to corroborate these results, so it's not true. But one thing that is good to know is that dark colored alcohol give you worse hangovers. So red wine, whiskey, beer, you can avoid those. And what we like to say is that you should drink gay water, which is, <laughs> which is a vodka soda, okay? Because it's a clear liquor and it's water and it hydrates you. You can find it at your local grocery store. Well, <laughs> the other thing we want to know is who is the winner of our fine myth busting Ooh. game? Well, the champion today, ladies and gentlemen, is... Marcia! Thank you so much for joining oh, us. That was a ton of fun, everybody. If you want more answers to more of life's burning questions, head over to the ASAP Science YouTube channel.